Um, I have a few more positions open, so please consider it. Um, trying to make it as easy for everybody to volunteer as they can and not take a bunch of your time up. So just um, there's a board out there. You can sign your name up or contact me personally, and, and we'll find the right spot for you. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Someone did, little birdie did tell me that we have an anniversary today, a 70th anniversary today. Mm. Ralph and Greta are celebrating their anniversary today. <laughs> for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health, God has blessed you and your marriage and your family and your life together. And our wish for you today is that God would continue to bless you today, tomorrow, and forever in his holy name. Amen. Are there any other announcements? If not, then let's turn to the order for confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you through the power of the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. Let's stand for our opening song, Jesus Shall Reign.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. You are great, O God, and greatly to be praised. You have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you, and serve you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the letter to the Romans, chapter 7, beginning at verse 15. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do not do what I want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want. But the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with my mind I am a slave to the law of God, but with my flesh I am a slave to the law of sin. The word of the Lord. I'd like to invite the young people up for this message time. Do we have any youngsters who want to come up today? See, I remembered my stool. My family was having a picnic one time and they invited all the relatives and everybody was there and we had nice nice time and everybody ate and we were all full from supper and sitting around and talking and then somebody said it's time for watermelon and I was about I don't know 10 11 years old and I thought I can do that I can do that and I said I'll go get the watermelon because the watermelon was clear on the other end of the house. It was sitting in the garage, and we'd put it in a big tub with some ice so the watermelon got cold. And I knew I'd helped put the watermelon in there, so I figured, oh yeah, I can do that. That's no problem. I can go get the watermelon. Except when I went and got the watermelon, guess what? All of a sudden, it was cold. 
And all of a sudden, it was wet. And all of a sudden, it was slippery. (laughs) And I dropped it. I dropped it. Yep. I was trying to carry it, and I dropped it on the ground, and it went boom, and it broke broke apart. Yep, you were right. You were right. And you know, when that happened, it was like, oh my gosh, what did I do? I ruined the watermelon for everybody. They're going to be so mad at me. And I didn't. And that's what happened. I went, around, I went around to the back of the house and they said, where's the watermelon? And I said, well, it kind of fell. And they didn't yell at me. In fact, they laughed and they said, yeah, that happens. And so some people came and helped me to pick up all the pieces. And I said, I'm sorry, I broke the watermelon. And they said, well, that's okay. We had to cut it up anyway. (laughs) Of course, of course. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) But you know what? The thing about that was, I was trying to do something good. I was trying to do something right, and I goofed. I messed up, didn't I? I was trying to do the right thing, and it didn't work. And I felt so bad. I was afraid I was going to get yelled at. And I had to think about that as as we were reading that first reading today. Because, you know, that seems to happen to us a lot. Well, it was, it, was too, it was a big, big tub full of ice water. So it would be kind of heavy to move. But the thing is, we goof up sometimes. Even when we're trying our best to do what we're supposed to do, when we're trying our best to, to behave and do good things, Sometimes we make mistakes, and we feel bad when that happens. But we can be forgiven. It can be okay. Like that watermelon, I made a mistake, but it was okay. It was all right. And sometimes in, in, in the life, sometimes we're going to try and do our best to do good things and mess up. And it's okay. Because that happens. And sometimes we're going to deliberately do things that we know we shouldn't be, and we're going to get caught, and we're going to get in trouble. But then we can be forgiven. And it's okay. And the amazing thing about Jesus is that he tells us, I know you're going to mess up. I know you're going to try your hardest, but sometimes it's not going to work out. But I forgive you. But I love you. But it's okay. And I have to tell you the most wonderful thing in the world is to know that you made a mistake and to have somebody say, it's okay. I forgive you because I love you. Let's pray. Jesus, you know that we are imperfect. You know that we make mistakes. Thank you, Lord, that you're always willing to hear us. You're always willing to forgive us. You're always willing to give us another chance again. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for coming up.
reading from the Gospel of St. Matthew, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowd, saying, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, but you didn't dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came, neither eating nor drinking, and they said, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they said, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to the infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by the Father, And no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, Lord, may the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Amen. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It doesn't always feel that way, does it? It doesn't always feel that way. It seems sometimes as though, boy, everything is a struggle. It seems sometimes as though everything is overwhelming. You see the little kids coming home from school and, and they're just bowed down with the burdens of their schoolwork and their troubles and the, the conflicts they were in in school and the friends that they have and the enemies they have and it seems like the whole world is just pushing down on them and, and then we get a little older and, and you think, oh, well you get to your teenage years and that'll be wonderful, won't it? You'll be all grown up. (laughs) Except we know how it only gets worse, doesn't it? It only gets worse because you're not only dealing with all the changes in your own self and in your own life, but you're dealing with all the changes and the struggles and the pressures that all those other people are putting on you. And then you get out and get a job. And that's easy, isn't it? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I worked a few jobs before I went to seminary and the pressure they put on you. You got to do, you got to do, you got to do, you got to get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. And it seems like no matter what you do, there's always more that needs to be done and the pressure is on there all the time. And then you suddenly have to pay your own bills and you have to pay your own rent and your own, buy your own food and cook your own food and clean your own house. And you, it just seems overwhelming. Now, I I happen to choose a profession that some people think is easy, but um, physically it may not be as challenging as some, but emotionally this work of ministry can be a real challenge because you're bearing the burdens not only of yourself but of the whole congregation. And all of the worries and all of the stresses and stresses about money and stresses about building and stresses about this person who's been sick and this person who's going through a tough time in their life and they've come to you to talk about it and you're just carrying all these burdens of all these people all the time. And you know what that's like. So then you retire and all your troubles are gone, right? (laughs) It seems as though the burdens of this life always weigh upon us. The stresses of this life always weigh upon us. So where do we find help? Where do we find hope? 
you wouldn't believe it the way some people talk, but Jesus came to say, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Sure, if we want to sit there and, and parse the theology of every verse in Scripture, and people have done that, and I've had volumes and volumes and volumes of, of works of people trying to understand and describe and take apart and put back together the words of Scriptures and what God is trying to say to us and what Jesus is trying to say to us and all of those things that it means and all of the things that you must do and all of the things that you must not do and... But Jesus said, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. And Jesus said, here's my burden for you. Love the Lord your God. Here's my challenge for you. Love your neighbors as yourself. And then Jesus said, I came to give you hope. I came to give you forgiveness. I came to give you life. And that's my yoke upon you. We can argue forever about the fine points of theology and all of those things, but in the end, the message is simple. God loves you. God forgives you. And God wants you to love him. And God wants you to experience his love and his forgiveness. It's just that simple. Now, if we can only convince the world of that, if we can only convince the, all those people out there in the world who want to make this faith a burden in itself. If we could only go out into this world and convince those people who want to make this faith a, a challenge in itself and a restriction and a burden that you have to bear. Because God's message is simple. Christ's message is simple. Love the Lord your God. Love your neighbor, and you will know my love, and you will know my forgiveness, and you will know my hope. The burdens of this world will go on. Young and old, male and female, happy and sad, the burdens of this life go on. The challenges of this life go on. But there is a place of rest for us. There is a place of hope for us. There is a place of life for us. Come to me, Jesus said, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's stand for our hymn.
Together we proclaim our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. And the third day he rose again, He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. God of the covenant, you call ministers to proclaim your gospel of grace throughout the world. Inspire pastors deacons, church musicians, and all ministers of your word as they carry out your work. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of all creation, you reveal your goodness through all you have made. Rivers and seas, plants and animals, and endangered species. Prosper the work of conservation organizations, botanical gardens, zoos, and wildlife sanctuaries. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of the nations, You desire that all the peoples of the world live in peace. Guide government leaders at all levels, national, state, and local, to work for justice, mercy, and reconciliation. 
Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of compassion, you bring healing to those who are sick, consolation to those who are grieving, and well-being to those who are distraught. Send skilled caregivers to all in need, especially Denise, Lori, Tizzy, Carol, Angela, Dan, Beth, Gerald, and all those we name in our hearts and on our lips. Make your presence known among all who suffer. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of rejoicing, you have brought us together this day to worship around word and sacrament. Encourage children in their learning and growing. And watch over those who are absent today. Lead us all to places of renewal and refreshment. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of all faithfulness, through the witness of the faithful departed, you reveal love in action. Embolden us by their example to build up the beloved community in all the contexts we encounter. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let's share that peace with one another. We continue with the offering.
God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night he was betrayed, our Lord, he was handed over. Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share in this heavenly food the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom... With you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are all who, call, who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Please be seated. I have my communion servers. Hymn number 479, We Come to the Hungry Feast. Oh, 
hymn number 774, What a Fellowship, What a Joy Divine. Amazing Grace, 779.
Let us pray. Loving Lord, we thank you that you have fed us in this holy sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet in your eternal kingdom. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and to work your praise and glory for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing our closing song, Lord of all hopefulness. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Happy anniversary to you.